Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here then hi, my name is Miss Paris and I'm a newly qualified primary school teacher here in the UK. Now I first off want to apologise about my voice. It's been my first week of teaching and I, and I think like a lot of teachers out there, their voices are very painful so apologies if it sounds croaky or I lose it. Yeah, teaching life for you. So I know that a lot of you will either be starting their PGC very very soon or you have maybe done your first few days, or you've started uni but you've yet to start your placement. So I thought I would publish this video now so that you have the information in advance and that you can be prepared when you go into the classroom. So today I wanted to talk to you about how you can observe lessons effectively. So it's one thing going into a classroom and sitting down and being like, okay, I'm going to observe this teacher, cool. <laughs> But what are you looking out for? What do you need to make note of? What are the takeaway messages and how can you find them? So today I wanted to give you a few tips on how to observe lessons effectively and at the end I will be directing you towards a resource that I have made that you can use to help you observe lessons effectively. My first tip is to really look at the structure of the lesson. So from the moment you're sat down there and the moment the lesson starts, pay attention as to what the starter is. Did they introduce the learning intention or the learning objective? Did they talk about it? Did they explain it? Or did they maybe ask the children to try and guess what the learning intention is based on what they did last lesson or based on a clue on the board? How do they introduce that to the children? How do the children know what the goal of that lesson is? Next, have a look at what they do to start the lesson. Do they maybe do a warm-up activity or do they do a model of what the teacher wants them to achieve. This will really depend on key stage, but have a look at how they are immersed into the main part of the lesson. And also, if they aren't immersed straight away into the main activity, have a look at the transition between the starter and the main activity. How do they go about this? Was there a direct link? or was it a very sly link that the teacher then had to kind of introduce to them later on and they had to discuss why that starter activity was relevant. And then the same with the main activity and the plenary. How was the transition from the main activity to the plenary, how was that carried out? Was it just to kind of clap and then kind of just hold them, put your pens down and we're gonna do this? Or did a lot of the children kind of finish early? How did the teacher deal with that? And then with the main activity, have a look at how activities were differentiated or how the work was differentiated. Could you tell those who needed help based on the input that the teacher gave them or the work that they were doing? Could you tell maybe who was pre-working towards, working towards ARE um, or GD? Or could you have a look at the work that maybe SCND children received and how that was catered for them? How did the teacher differentiate towards them? Did they maybe work with a TA? If so, how was the TA debriefed? Maybe you could ask that if you didn't see that happening. And how was the TA supporting them? Do they have the opportunity to maybe go to other groups or is that a direct cutoff group? All these kind of things it's worth noting down. And when I say note down, I don't mean note down everything. You can't note down everything because actually at the end, again when I mention that takeaway message, you're not going to take away that, okay, it was a subtraction lesson and the teachers had some worksheets that had subtraction on them. You know, that's just a waste of time. You need to look at the things that can almost be generalised to different lessons, different subjects, different year groups. So for example, when I was saying that starter activity and then how that transitioned into the main activity, you might like how they introduced the LI in a sly way or that the children had to discuss with their partners what the topic of today's lesson might be. Or you might like that the teacher just outright said it and then kind of dissected that LI to make sure the children understand the importance and the aim of that lesson. So those two things, they're not super precise to that lesson. They could be generalised to any other lesson. But when you observe different things, different methods of doing things, different teaching styles, you can kind of think, okay, well, next time when I plan a lesson, how would I like my starter activity to go? How might I like it to transition into the main activity of the lesson? And by observing loads of different people and observing different ways of doing so, you can kind of think, okay, well, next time I'll try that. Or I'll try and put this into the lesson and see if it works for me in the class. And so take note of things that can apply to different lessons, different subjects, year groups, key stages. It doesn't have to be that specific. 
because like I said, specific isn't very useful if you're observing a math lesson and then you end up going to an art lesson or an English lesson. You're kind of like, okay, well I can't use much of that. My next tip is similar to what I've been saying about making notes but also not noting down everything, is take note of things that stand out to you, things that you would like to try in the future. Maybe activities or was it behavioural management techniques? I've seen people use a multi-link system before, I've seen people do... Sorry, this is what I said. <laughs> oh, my voice. I'm telling you. Okay. <laughs> so, behavioural management techniques. Um, did somebody use a multi-link system that you'd liked? Did somebody maybe prefer to use dojos? Did some use reflection time in class? Or did some prefer to do reflection time outside of class? Of course the teachers have to abide by the school policy, the school behaviour policy, but if they try any unique things or they have any specific behavioural techniques for specific children, depending on their need, etc., then you might think, okay, that's something useful that I could note down either physically note down or just kind of keep it mentally in mind. All of those things are worth noting. If you kind of liked how a teacher waited for silence and just stood there and their presence alone was enough for the children to go, hang on, they're not talking, oh, they're waiting for us, then brilliant. Make sure to try that out next time, maybe make a note of that. If you liked how the teacher kind of was very proactive in getting the silence and praising those who were doing really, really well, make note of that, try that out next time. So do you see what I mean? Just take note of things that you might in future want to apply or things that you've never seen before and you kind of went, wow, that really worked. I wonder if that could work with my main placement or if I could try that out on my second placement and see if the results are consistent. And my last tip on what to do to make sure that your lesson observations are effective is to reflect at the end. Was the lesson effective? If not, why wasn't it? What could have been changed to make the lesson more effective? At what point did the lesson maybe stop being effective? Was there a point where maybe the children got bored or they finished too early? What could have been done to change this and make sure that they were still able to learn? Could there have been challenges provided or should they maybe have moved on to the plenary a bit earlier? All these kind of things you can reflect on, whether you make note of this and then use that as teacher standard evidence or you just have some little pointers to mention in your mentor meeting. That just shows that you've been really proactive during the lesson and you haven't just sat there and kind of watched them and potentially wasted an hour. And that's not what you really want to do. You always want to be learning, you always want to be improving and finding ways to make your lessons more engaging or unique and not always doing the same kind of clap thing or whatever you do because then the children after a while will just get bored of it. So. I hope that was useful for you. If you're not interested in hearing about the resource that I have made, then that's fine, just click off now. But before you do, if you enjoy this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing down below for more teacher content. Okay, thank you for those who stayed on to hear about the resource I made. So basically all of these tips in this video. I have condensed into a form or worksheet, if you will, of how to make notes for your lesson observations effectively. I have put all of the things that I think are really worth paying attention to and noting all in a nice format that you can write in, either you can edit it and work from your computer or you can print it off and you can write in it. All of these things are really good. I have linked to the teaching standards within it. So for example, in a subheading I've put TS four, eight, whatever in it, next to it. And so if you ever put these into your teaching standard folders, it's quite easy to reference. You can find the teaching standard it links to and then talk about the impact it had and it can just boost that evidence folder. Okay, so if you are interested in that, I will leave a link down below, but also don't forget to give this video a thumbs up because then YouTube can suggest it to more people. And if you have any comments or questions about lesson observations, how can you observe people effectively? Did I miss anything out? Please leave them down in the comments below and I will reply to you shortly. Thank you for watching, bye.